Você que tá aí curtindo esse podcast, você tem caspa? Ah, então nem precisa mais ficar com vergonha. Chegou a nova linha Dercos Anticaspa DS da Vichy. Ela elimina 100% da caspa visível, sem ressecar os cabelos. E para todos os tipos de cabelo, seco, normal ou oleoso. Dá até para usar blusa preta. Não é à toa que a Dercos Anticaspa é a marca mais recomendada por dermatologistas no Brasil e no mundo. Saiba mais. What is Café Mocha? Café Mocha is experts, celebrities. What's up? This is Bell Bit the Bow. This is Fantasia. This is in Bow. This is India Ari. So much more. All from a woman's perspective. What flavor are you, baby? This is Café Mocha. Lonnie Love, Yo Yo, and Angelique. We call it Café Mocha Radio from a woman's perspective. Comedian Earthquake is our guest. He's got a new movie on Netflix. An upcoming special, and he's here to talk comedy and politics. What's up in these streets, Lonnie? Oh, devastating news. Um, there was a fatal police shooting of Sonia Massey. She's a 36-year-old black woman who called 911 for help. Um, and on Monday, uh, they released the body cam footage that shows what led to uh, the, um, the incident. It was a 36-minute video. It was released by the Illinois State Police, and it shows two county sheriff deputies. They responded to Sonia's house after midnight on July the 6th. She had called 911 to report a possible prowler at her home in Springfield. And um, in the footage, Sean uh, Gar Grayson And another deputy, they're speaking calmly to her. She's sitting on a couch. She was looking for her ID. And then the, they noticed that there was a pot of boiling water over in her kitchen. So they motioned for her to go and get the boiling water because they, they, they even reference and say, hey, we don't want a fire to break out. And so she has the water They're uh, They're on the other side of the room away from her. And one of the cops, they back away from her. And she simply says, why are y'all backing away? And one, I'm paraphrasing, says, oh, I, I, don't, I don't want no hot water in my face or something. And then Sonia says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And then he says, what? And she says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He immediately gets upset. He doesn't understand. In my, when I look at it, he didn't understand what she was saying. He starts to cuss at her and he says, I will shoot you in your effing face. And then they start yelling at her to put the, the, the pot down. Now, when you slow mo it, She has put the pot down. She has her hands up with her uh, mittens on and they shoot. He shoots, not the other partner. He shoots her immediately. Then the partner who has the body cam on says, I'm going to get my kit. He turns to her and he says, she's gone. She's gone. So this uh, Sean uh, Grayson has been fired. But um, now because of this body cam footage, he didn't have his body cam on. But the, luckily, by the grace of God, the partner had his on. And so it has been released to the public and the public is now seeing it. This comes two weeks after uh, the shooting. Grayson is 30 years old. He was indicted by a grand jury last week on three counts of first degree murder and one count each of aggregated battery with a firearm and official misconduct. He has entered a not guilty plea. He has denied pretrial release and, um, You know, this is just one of a number of black women who have been killed by police in their own homes. We remember Breonna Taylor. We remember Atiana Jefferson. Um, and this is another case with Sonia Macy. And it's just the fact that she's saying something that culturally he did not understand. As a police officer, you should listen. As a police officer, you know, you're not supposed to react the way you reacted. And it's just a shame that here we are again, having to witness another Black female losing her life in her own home. And it's funny how in this country, we we have this celebratory 
thing that we're going through with uh, Kamala Harris possibly being nominated to the highest office in the land, but we're still dealing with basic issues like police brutality and police violence. My heart goes out to Sonia's family and to her children, and hopefully the right thing will be done with this officer and he will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Ben Crump is on this one, right? Yes, Ben is um he is been spreading the word and letting everyone know about it. And what's interesting too is that when they're at the door, when they first come to the door, Angelique, she immediately tells them don't hurt me. Ooh. That that was her first words and her last words were I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. They were literally laughing seconds before that about the water. I don't know what's happening with the police force. And this is in my humble opinion about some things. I know that police are stressed. I know that they're tired. I know that there's low pay. I know that there is fear. But also, we need to make sure that there's drug testing. We need to make sure there's psychological counseling. This is the kind of stuff is, you know, we want to say defund the police, but put in services and make sure that they are, you know, psychologically tested, that they're drug tested, that they get proper uh, rest so that they can serve the community the, the healthiest that they can be. And also you have to look at their background. I mean, he had certain and it's not to talk about people with tattoos, but there were certain markings of tattoos on his arm that led people to believe certain things. It's like, you know, we need police. I keep telling people we need law and order, but we need the right types of police. And that money that is being funded to have police, we need to make sure that there are services in place so that you know, we are making sure that we check them physically and also uh, mentally because reacting like that, when you look at the tape, you're like, wait, what? They laughing. And then all she says is, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus because he didn't understand what it was. It was like a demon came out of him saying the word Jesus. So like I said, my condolences to her family and we will continue to monitor this, but, you know, he is being prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. We're going to keep um, abreast of this story because it's just tragic and it should not happen in the United States. You call the police to help you, not to shoot you. He had a number of DUIs. There were a number of police departments that would not hire him. This particular department hired him, even with all this background that he had that was very questionable. The abuses continue. Thanks, Lonnie. Mm. All right, on the way, Comedian Earthquake. Announcing the Mocha Podcast Network, an innovative lifestyle podcast network featuring conversations from a Black perspective. Curated with respected voices led by actresses and comedians Sherry Shepard and Kim Whitley. We're funny and we have a point of view. We call that edumatainment. That's what we call it. Is that what it is? Veteran TV journalist Rolanda Watts. Shocking the heck out of everybody. The legendary Unky Divas in Vogue. This topic is girl groups in the industry. To syndicated broadcast personalities, Lonnie Love and Dee Dee McGuire, as well as an array of experts and activists. Mocha Podcast Network, a lifestyle destination with authentic voices and perspectives designed to enrich and empower women of color with a unique listening experience. More than a destination, the Mocha Podcast Network is a full-service studio that offers an ongoing portfolio of production, distribution, marketing, guest booking, and most importantly, ad sales. With a unique revenue model for podcasters that includes customized promotional campaigns created specifically around podcaster and targeted audience, service social media promos and pushes, MPN brand advertising, targeted electronic newsletter, experienced sales representation. For advertisers, the Mocha Podcast Network is a safe marketplace to align their brands with trusted voices, organically engaging the highly in-demand female consumer and more. 
With quality over quantity, from concept to completion, now is the time for content creators and brands to join the innovative Mocha Podcast Network and experience unapologetic conversations with a new perspective. Standing in solidarity from a woman's perspective. It's Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha Radio from a woman's perspective with Lonnie Love. Yo, yo, I'm Angelique. You do the introductions, Lonnie. Oh, this is my comedy brother right here. You can hear him on the SiriusXM channel, uh, Kevin Hart's channel. It's called Quake's House. He has a new Netflix movie out. He has the top rated Netflix stand-up special this year. And he's mm. my brother. Give it up for my man, Earthquake. What's up, Quake? Hey, sister girl, feeling good for black, black women power. You know I'm down. Kamala Harris for president. <laughs> Let's talk club. about that. Got to get that out right. That, listen, man, I challenge all black men for once. Can we please stand up for a black woman for once? Mm. Period. I mean, nothing. I mean, zero. Listen, zero complaints. I mean, okay. just it's just zero complaints. Just let's, do it. Let's be real, yeah. though, Quake, because, you know, I'm sure you've seen, you know, all the hate on social media mm-hmm. and there's a lot of negativity coming. Um, and I'm surprised that some of it is from black men. I think they're conservative men. Charleston White did a scathing. It was just so disturbing what he said about just a woman and a sister in general. What are your male friends saying about this? Hey, we pro black. Me and my friends are pro. We're pro black women. I mean, I want one thing. I envy about Trump supporters. I want us to support them just like Trump supporters support him, regardless, right. regardless. And to be honest with you, for all black men, we would never be where we at if it wasn't for our women. Our women loved us when the world didn't love us. Right. Gave us self-esteem, allow us to lead them when we had nothing to leave when the world could. We wouldn't be here without black women. So, you know, to each his own, you're going to come to that conclusion later You know, when you sit down. But the most beautiful thing ever that was put on this earth is a black woman. And I, I stand by that. I say that on my show, and I'm telling you, she is the most qualified. She is the best, and we need to support her. And why not her? Why not her? Put the qualification up there. I mean, she is, she's been a, a district attorney, a state attorney, a senator, and a mm-hmm. vice president. Those are her qualifications that she did. We ain't going to talk about her education against right. a man who never was class president. So what are we talking about here? It's just simple and simple off of it. And it's self-hate. You know, it's easy. I, feel, I would never understand. And I've been on this earth for 61 years. The hatred that our own men have for our black women, but say they love their mama, say they love their kids, say they love their sisters. But that's somebody else's mama, that's somebody else's sister, that's somebody else's daughter. So it's the hatred is real. I'm going from the rooftop until she get in there. I'm damn sure down with her, and I'm going to be down with her until she get there. And it's a great day. And the haters going to hate because, you know, like I said, you know, nobody robbed an empty bank. <laughs> exactly. It's Cafe Mocha on the line. Comedian Earthquake, Unfrosted, currently is streaming on Netflix. Now let's talk about this whole situation with Biden. I mean, were you surprised that he dropped out, Quake? No, he listen, man. Biden has been I did nine years in the military. I ran, I I live with people like but he's a patriot. Right. He believes he's a good man. He believes in public service. There's certain people that's in the military that joined the military. I just went in there to get out my mother's house. I said, <laughs> if I'm going to get hollered at at home, I might as well get a check for it. But it was people that was I was serving with that actually are patriots to the country, want to serve in the country. They wanted to do their work. They, they had patriotism in them for their country, and that's what he is. And he saw that he, in his present state, could not articulate the difference between him, the person he was running against, and he had to pass the baton to somebody that could tell 
the threat that the, per- the other person from that other aisle is. That's why they're upset right now. Because now they, they, can't, they can't sit here and play these games behind us because they have a person that can articulate the point, the difference between her and him, them and us. Right. That's Definitely. all. Bring it straight to them. That's what the whole thing of, and he tapped out, and he supported I love Biden anyway. He gave us the first Supreme Court just black woman. Yeah, He gave that's it right. to us. He gave us the first black vice president. Trump that's didn't up. give us nothing. He tried to get five brothers to go to jail at Central Park Five and found out they was innocent and still wouldn't apologize. And I don't mess with no man to say he's never made no mistake. Because they asked him, have you ever asked God for a forgiveness? He said, I never made a mistake. Mm. Right then and there, I'm out of there. I'm out of there. <laughs> Because he'll get you in trouble. Okay, it's Cafe Mocha on the line. We're talking to comedian Earthquake, the New York Times named Quake's comedy special, Legendary, the funniest special of 2022. And currently they're in pre-production for his second Netflix special produced again by Dave Chappelle. You know, when I saw Legendary, first of all, it was a long time coming. Can you talk about Quake? For people out there that's listening, that's trying to hit a goal, how to be, how to stay and persevere and just and hit your goals. Well, one thing you have to have faith is God's time. It ain't your time. You know, he knows what's best for it. He knew not to let me be rich early. I'd be dead. He mm. needed, <laughs> he knew to get certain people can, can guggle success. He knew to give me tablespoons of it because I wasn't ready to digest it yet. And uh, I wouldn't change nothing in the world. Uh, uh, nothing happened in my career at all. I, I love it that it is at this point. And I tell people every time, remember, it's a journey to a destination. Who want to get to the destination early? Because that destination, man, is the end. I, hey, man, I had a great ride, and I'm still hotter than I've ever been in the business right now so i'm living the life over here and i made a lot you know me i've been selling tickets for a long time so i've been mm-hmm. living great i just been living under the radar <laughs> i haven't been struggling out here i've been doing good but right now there's just the expanding the people that know about me and uh i'm about to do my second special i'm gonna do it in atlanta because that's where i started my comedy career i did the first one in dc because that's where i'm from you know, I want to do it with my birthright. And um, the, my birth in comedy is going to be in Atlanta for the second one. And I'm looking forward to it. And right now you're alongside Jerry Seinfeld in the current movie for Netflix entitled Unfrosted. Uh, what it was? What is it like working with another comedy great? Well, he is precise. Jerry, like for me, I slow. You know, I, I'm off the top of the head. I don't, I'm. <laughs> You know, Jerry, every word is particular. It's, precise. it's like a fine engine in a Ferrari. <laughs> he, everything is precision. And uh, it was great to be with him. He's a big friend of mine. He saw my special. And when he saw my special, he told Ted to run the, the head of Netflix, that man is a machine. He's one of the best comics I've ever seen. I need to put him in my movie. And wow. he gave me a cameo role. And I was so happy for it. That's nice. I love it. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's supposed to be about. It's that when I tell y'all Earthquake has been putting in the work, but he's always had his audience. He's, I mean, you could just listen to him for hours and hours. He's, I feel like he's down home. I feel like he's, he's that black man. That's like your uncle, your father, your brother, and I think that that has been his appeal. What do you think your appeal is from, you know, the, the um, audience point of view, Quake? Well, exactly what you say. I mean, I tell all stars who call themselves stars, you're not stars. What you do is special. Who you are is not. You know, if you really thought you was that special, then why you had to prove it? Why wouldn't you, when you was born, why wasn't nobody in the maternity room saying, hey, come this special person coming right now. only person that had that accolade was Jesus, that they heard that he was born and they came to see him. So as long as you keep that humility and blessing that God picked you out of all the people from Southeast D.C. to give you this amazing talent, to see it, man, the humility is what's great for me. 
because I know I'm not special. What I do is special, and is 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 a beautiful thing. And long as you keep that, you know, uh, it, it's relatable. And I always stay around the people who I tell my jokes to. I never get I never uh, get away from them. I always believe a shepherd should always smell like the sheep. You can't be on the hill and sitting here telling people who come see you and you don't even relate to the problems that they're going through to make it funny. So right. that's my appeal. I You always see me in, in, in Dollar Tree or or, or <laughs> at Marshall's or Ross or <laughs> Food for Less or the cookout. The bowling alley, you know what I mean? No, it's the truth. I was on, I was on tour with, uh, with Quake, and what Quake would do is like, if we, I had a, a few dates. It wasn't a full tour, but it was some dates, and I was able to shadow, uh, Quake. And it's like Quake comes into the city. Quake go to a club. And he goes to, and I was like, why are we going to a club? I'm tired. He's like, no, <laughs> we going to the club because then that gives the message to everybody that Quake is in town. And I was like, yeah. oh, I didn't realize that. But yeah. that's what he does. Yeah. He goes to the clubs. Now, some of them are strip clubs, but the point is, <laughs> they club. Yeah. <laughs> I got to pay my dues. I mean, that's my new now the Negro college fund. I go to a country buffet. I go to Golden Corral. You know what I mean? My woman hates me going to Golden Corral. I said, baby, why buy one men, one entree when you can go to Golden Corral and get whatever you want to eat? I'm in town for the weekend. So they see you in Golden Corral. They're like, what you doing in here? I said, the same thing you're doing in here. Getting something to eat for twelve ninety five. <laughs> It's Cafe Mocha on the line. My brother in comedy, Earthquake, Unfrosted, is currently streaming on Netflix. Um, also, you can catch his uh, Netflix special, Legendary, on Netflix as well. Um, you're also, you you have a reoccurring character on two sitcoms. One is on The Neighborhood on CBS, and the other one is Johnson for Bounce TV. Can you talk about how exciting that is to be in television like that? Oh, man, I love it. I mean, shout out to Cedric Entertainer and uh, um, his production company, his manager and everything, put me down. And um, both of those, the Johnsons, um, I play the dude that knock off the uh, the older woman that still forgot about love. You know what I mean? Scoop her up because she got health care. And uh, the <laughs> other one, I'm, I'm just, uh, <laughs> you know, them sisters that, that gave up on love, I come and get them. And um, in, in the barber shop on, on the neighborhood. So it's a beautiful show. Johnson & Johnson is very, is very, very good. It's like man, a man version of Sex in the City. Right. And, um, and uh, for the neighborhood, it's CBS, man, Paramount. You know what I mean? So you, Viacom, you, that's the highest thing, you know, being on there. Say it gave me a role as Q as only in the barber shop. So, and plus, it helped me with my health care. Definitely. <laughs> exactly. You get them hours, you know. Um, yeah. Earth so, um, Earthquake, you know, earlier this year, Cat Williams did an interview on Club Shay Shay. Uh, you were also mentioned in, um, as well as other comedians. What are your thoughts on that? You mentioned me one time. But the problem I have with the situation is two things I have with it. Man to man, if you have any problem with another man, you should bring it to that man. And if you don't like his answers, then you handle it as a man. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm from Washington, D.C. We never, ever, we like emotions, you know, the group the emotions. Don't ask or tell my neighbor, come to me. Right. So you got a problem with it. So if you got a problem with this man, you know, say this to him. Second of all, you know, we need to get rid of these shock jocks in these here. Yeah. These, 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 these Wendy Williams type people in here. Where's the jokes? Where the funny at? I don't mind you talking about something, but make it funny. And right. then when you do put your comedy out here, it better be funny. You get what I'm saying? Where's mm -hmm. your joke? If you're going to do a comedy special, you're going to do anything out here, you need to be just as funny as the stuff you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? These people have families, they have kids, they have supporters, and you out here just talking about here reckless about these people. 
And then when, you know, consequence is no coincidence. If someone take it to you, then don't, I don't want to see no rest in peace with no hands folded and all that. You bring that on yourself because if you talk about a grown man without talking to him first, then I think you, you should be willing to deal with any circumstances that comes along with you doing disrespecting him that way. So, you know, and another thing, last and last thing, is if you're truly a boss and you don't like this person, you don't need this person's money for your standard of living, then don't mess with him no more. Mm-hmm. That's why I never like, I never look, I never like uh, love and hip hop. I ain't got nothing against it, but I used to always say these people be arguing with each other, say they don't like each other, but they say they boss. They both, then why are you at the, um, at, the, at the family reunion? Why are you going to their boutique? Why are you going <laughs> to their stores? Why do you keep meeting with these people? Only reason you should have to deal with somebody is they're contributing to your standard of living. If you truly financial independent, you need to just don't say nothing else to them and move on with your life because the world don't need you or them for it to survive. So that's yeah. my attitude towards it. It's just simple. They just want clickbait, yep. to be honest with you. Yeah. that I mean, I think that was the whole situation with that cat thing. I think that he needed to sell tickets. Um, so he went on there and it got attention. And But there's other ways to sell tickets than, you know, talking about your coworkers. Voting day is Tuesday, November 5th. Make sure you're registered. Make sure you know where your polling place is. Make sure you know the voting rules for your state. Get all that information at whenweallvote.org. Whenweallvote.org. Then we all got to get out there and vote. Earthquake's latest special, Legendary, is currently streaming on Netflix. He's got a new one in the works. Plus, you can catch him in the movie Unfrosted, also on Netflix. Standing in solidarity from a woman's perspective. It's Cafe Mocha. Emmy Award winning talk show host Lonnie Love, legendary rapper Yo Yo, and me. I'm the producer Angelique. We call it Cafe Mocha, and we've got comedian Earthquake on the line. My brother in comedy, Earthquake Unfrosted, is currently streaming on Netflix. Um, also, you can catch his uh, Netflix special, Legendary, on Netflix as well. I mean, we all in this together. We all trying to make money. We all trying to survive, especially after this, you know, this strike. I mean, the public doesn't realize that the industry itself, the television and film industry still is not back to where it needs to be. So we're all kind of like surviving and trying to get projects and trying to sell things. And so with the public, when he said that, the public automatically has these different thoughts, you know, and I just think it was just a selfish thing to do and it was unnecessary. You're going to sell tickets, you're going to sell tickets. It's just, that's just it. Yeah. Whatever the motivation is as a man, if I ever have a problem with a man, I am going to bring it to that man. You know, some people scared to do that. <laughs> well, then, then, then if you ain't, if you ain't straight enough, if you ain't strong enough to bring it to that man in his face, then don't sit there and get on no other way to bring it to him. That's, That's cowardly. That's true. That's cowardly. That's cowardly. That's true. That's the first thing I say, did you let this man know that? And each time, all the people that I know, so I see, I go for anybody. I see person four or five times and they never told me we had a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lap That's it up and then you go up here and talk about me. So, you know, I pay them no attention to be quite honest with you. You know what I mean? I, yes. you know, I, I really don't. I don't, I don't, I just, I, what I say all the time is, where's the jokes? Be funny. You want to yes. impress me? Tell me a joke. Let your work speak for yourself, not your words. What do you think about the state of comedy today? There's a lot of ways to have comedy through TikTok. You have comedy, the, the live comedy. Uh, what do you think about the state of comedy today? And is it needed? I think it's needed. I think is I think it's never been better talking about the potential of comedy. I think it's a genre that's gonna be leaned on more and more because of the trying times that we are. I think comedians are the third eye. We 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 preach and we speak truth to power in a humorous way. I think um true comedians are able to be right below is healthy. I think 
You cannot have a great time without laughter, and we are walking laugh machines. I think that is more is more important than that anything that everybody be true to their comedy. And if you look at the comedy clubs, they're packed. People are coming to see us. We're we are the long we are a long lasted art form that's even growing more and more. And um in our community, rap used to give us the message that we need. Now they've done gone in their own way and commercialized, but we're true to it. And I think um, comedy is going to be the bridge that gives people, they're going to come to us to hear the real truth in a laughter form of what's really happening. I, I, I think it's going to be the same way it was back in the 70s when it was hot and everybody is doing well. And you don't have to have a TV show or movie to make a sustained, a great living based mm-hmm. upon the stuff that you utter out your mouth. I, look, I love it. I think it's never been better. When are you dropping the next Netflix special? Well, I just I'm about to input ink to paper on the deal. Um, it will be 2025 when I film it. I'm looking for some time, to be honest with you, in February to film it in there. And then uh, I want to make sure it's in line that it be up for Emmys and award season before May 31st. So Definitely. the first quarter of next year, yes. Yeah. Definitely. I am on the um, Academy, so I will make sure and look out for it and remind you. <laughs> because... Please. Uh, <laughs> yeah. please. I definitely, definitely is, is well deserving. Um, but for right now, you guys can check out his current special, Legendary, on Netflix. Also, he's in the, the Jerry Seinfeld movie, Unfrosted. And you can listen to him on Sirius XM, uh, the Kevin Hart channel. Quake's house. It's what every it's every Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, four four p.m. to six p.m. on the East Coast, one to three on the West Coast, and the MGM coming home, my hometown, the DMV, um, August thirtieth and thirty first. I want everybody from home to come see me with my good friend Joe Claire. This will be the second annual. We did it last year. This time we added another show for it. And it's good to come home, eat some crab, drink a Heineken, and have some wings with mumbo sauce. I just love it, y'all. I mean, we all know and love you, Earthquake. And thank you for giving Willis Turner a job on your show because he needed it. He's Nobody named Willis. Yeah. Nobody named Willis anymore but him. He the last one. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> That's why I call him the last I call him the last official slave. He, <laughs> he was freed after Juneteenth. On the show, we call him the last, uh, the last official slave. Willis, oh. <laughs> his mother knew he wasn't gonna be with no white woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Quake. Thank you for stepping into Cafe Mocha, and good luck. We'll uh, look forward to your new special in 2025. Take care, bro. Thank you. And anybody want free tickets to the MGM show? All you got to do is follow me at the Real Earthquake. I have free tickets for you to come with us on the 30th and 31st. Only stipulation I have on my tickets is I'm all out of men tickets. So if you're a man, I ain't got nothing for you. <laughs> Get on out of here. I'll see you later, Earth. I love you. I love you too. Bye-bye. Earthquake's got a new special in the works. Plus, you can catch him in the movie Unfrosted on Netflix. Here's your dose of espresso. Strong, hot news now. This is The Espresso. A group of 200,000 white women broke the internet with their Zoom call supporting Kamala. But Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett says they got to do more than that. I need those white men not to just show up on the call, but for them to have conversations with other white men. I need those white women to show that showed up on the call to have conversations with other white women. The Supreme Court recently ruled that no matter what a president does, that person is immune from prosecution. Joe Biden wants to change that. The president is now a king above the law. Folks, just imagine what a president could do trampling civil rights and liberties given such immunity. This weekend at the box office, Lil Rel Howery stars in Harold and the Purple Crayon. He says he needed a stunt man for his skating scene. As soon as we set foot on that concrete, I just started shaking. It's so crazy. It became a mental thing where I became so scared I couldn't skate. That's the espresso. 
This is Cafe, Cafe Mocha. Mocha Radio from a woman's perspective. It's Cafe Mocha on the line. Kirk and Tammy Franklin from the TV One show, The One. Welcome to Cafe Mocha, guys. Together for the first time yeah. on this show. How y'all doing? Yes, yeah. we're doing good. Thank you so much for having us. Um, Kurt, um, when you're not busy on on social media dancing, uh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have this great dating show called The One. So, uh, Tammy, can you tell us about it? I just want you to know that that wasn't me dancing. That was my cousin Ray Earl. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Ray Earl had just got out of jail, and there was a little bit of an excitement about being released. Uh, he had several traffic tickets in different states, and so he was just very happy to be dancing. It was a happy dance. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All yeah. right. The shenanigans. <laughs> the shenanigans. But um, the, the one um, is a, a dating reality show uh, where Kirk and I come alongside um, – the bachelor's name is Brent and bachelorette Ashley. And we come alongside and, and coach them. Uh, one of the things that uh, really um, made Kirk and I intrigued us is that you have a bachelor and a bachelorette, which is quite different um, from dating shows. And then um, they are a little more seasoned in age and have lived some life. And so um, we felt that was a different dynamic as well for viewers. Now, Kurt, what made you want to uh, host a dating show? Because we're used to you with the gospel shows. You're great at that. But a dating show, what that's something totally different. That's a different muscle for you. Are you trying to say that I suck at it? It's just, <laughs> no. it's just, oh, <laughs> Answer the question, boy. <laughs> no, man, you know, um, uh, me and my creative partner, um, it, it, it was an idea that he had that really... Um, as a matter of fact, when he was a little boy, Tammy used to babysit him, and uh, <laughs> and so uh, and so he just really thought, you know, that it would be something really good for TT One's platform, and more than anything, I was really willing to to uh, do it and was excited about doing it just because I also just wanted, you know, Tammy for for the culture to get a chance to really see Tammy's uh, skill sets and how good she is in front of the camera, and you know, maybe hopefully you know, kind of really open up other opportunities for her. You know, she's empty nesting now and, you know, she, she's got the freedom to, you know, kind of see what she likes and what she doesn't like. And, 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 and I know that my platform a lot of times can be a catalyst mm-hmm. to be able to, uh, you know, kind of help launch her. And so, um, you know, and I think she's done a wonderful job too. Now, Tammy, oh, Tammy. We, yeah, Tammy, how are you feeling we, about yeah, it? Yeah, we want to know, girl. <laughs> You know, I think that the the major thing that I discovered was, um, and it, it, it actually it was the producer that was assigned to me uh, that really pointed it out to me. And, uh, you know, she began with giving me notes um, in the beginning, maybe the first couple episodes. And then, you know, a few episodes in, she came to me um, and said, I want you to know that you have great instincts. And she said, mm-hmm. to the point where I'm not giving you any more notes, you're, you're just you're just doing it. And so for me, it was so reflective of, you know, um, following my instincts and knowing that they're, that they're, that they're good. And having that, uh, note and that, um, encouragement, I think, especially coming from a woman, Mm -hmm. um, just really, really meant a lot. Want a little more of our flavor? Stay right there. It's Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha on the line. Kurt and Tammy Franklin from TV's One's their new dating show, The One. Kurt, what do you want people to get out of this dating show? Well, more than anything, I it's, it's I think that it's just really important to also show the other side of uh, just our culture, just our race that's not always lost in the context of sensationalism, where you know mm-hmm. we're throwing tables and chairs, and you know mm-hmm. that we we are highlighting sometimes the areas of us that are not always elevated. And, and I think that this is a fun show that gives you an opportunity to, yeah, you know, there's, there's some challenges, there's a little tension, there's a little drama, but we still keep it classy, we still keep it sexy, we, you know, we, we still keep it grownish. And I think that that's something that you don't find in other shows, but at the same time, it can still be very engaging. And I think that that's what people can be able to feel excited about, just to be reminded that, you know, we, you know we're, we're still royal people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you dig, you, you know, and 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 because we are royal people, people of color, 
with this beautiful melanin that we have, you know, that there's always a level of classiness that I get excited about when we can curate something that really showcases the best of who we are. It's Cafe Mocha on the line, Kurt and Tammy Franklin from TV's One's, their new dating show, The One. Um, what's the top advice, uh, Tammy, you would give singles looking for marriage? Because, you know, sisters, we always looking. <laughs> <laughs> always looking, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, you know, the biggest thing, of course, when I, I talk to, to so many ladies, um, is that um, th- making sure that you have done your own personal and inner work. A lot of times we, we want, uh, I talk to, you know, ladies and, and they want all these different things, but they themselves haven't done the work. So it's quite often that they're looking for the very thing that they haven't, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, that, that, they, that they haven't um, grown in themselves. And so, and then finding, you know, making sure that you are confident in who you are, that the person will come alongside and, and compliment you, not make you, um, you are complete by yourself. Um, and then to not putting so much emphasis on, um, the one past your own accomplishments. A lot of times we put so much emphasis on, um, marriage. I mean, you think about the different times in which you go to the holidays and, and, you know, and if you're a certain age, you're not married yet, you don't have children yet. And your accomplishments beyond that, um, it, you know, it almost, Falls in comparison to the fact, oh, but you're not married, mm-hmm. and that just that breaks my heart for you know, especially for my my my, my African American queens, that you know you all on your own, you're the one, right? Definitely. And Kurt, what's the best advice you have for married couples who want to stay together? If at first you don't succeed, give up, try something else. No, oh my God. <laughs> uh, the first- <laughs> <laughs> Other fish in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. That is so funny. You know, it's, I just think that more than anything is if you don't mind me saying this, is I think that my advice probably would initially start with uh, the advice I would give them before they get married. You know, it's, it's, a, it's I think that the reason why we're always having to do so much maintenance on marriages is mm-hmm. because we didn't get a chance to tune them up right in the right direction before they got married. Because, mm-hmm. you know, there are some people that needed, you know, maybe some, some personal, uh, you know, uh, counseling. You know, that they, they needed some more, some more personal work before they got married. I think that b- just because in American culture, everything is so romanticized, mm-hmm. that I think that we make, you know, we make the way, and I think Tammy said it uh, strong too, like, like, it's almost like the energy that you put in the wedding is not the energy that you put in the marriage. Mm. And, and I just think that it is so much of a disservice for marriages because we romanticize everything about the institution except for the institution itself. And I think that that's why I would always love to try to be in people's lives before they make the decision to really do the deep work, to ask the deep questions and have the level of transparency that's needed so that when the bumps that come in the road, it's, it's because marriage is going to bring bumps. Nothing is going to make you fail proof, you know, mm-hmm. but, but at least when the bumps come, you have the shot. It's Cafe Mocha. I'm Angelique, the producer. This election, there is a lot at stake. We may wake up next year this time to a totally different country. Thanks to Project 2025. Read up on it and then go to whenweallvote.org. Until next time, you can find us on all platforms at Cafe Mocha Radio. Cafe Mocha is a production of Miles Ahead Broadcasting in partnership with Super Radio. Executive producer Sheila Eldridge. For comments, booking, or more information, visit CafeMochaRadio.com. Announcing the Mocha Podcast Network, an innovative lifestyle podcast network featuring conversations from a Black perspective. Curated with respected voices led by actresses and comedians Sherry Shepard and Kim Whitley. We're funny and we have a yes. point of view. We call that edumatainment. That's what we call it. Is that what it is? Veteran TV journalist Rolanda Watts. Shocking the heck out of everybody. The legendary Unky Divas in Vogue. This topic is girl groups in the industry. 
to syndicated broadcast personalities Lonnie Love and Dee Dee McGuire, as well as an array of experts and activists. Mocha Podcast Network, a lifestyle destination with authentic voices and perspectives designed to enrich and empower women of color with a unique listening experience. More than a destination, the Mocha Podcast Network is a full-service studio that offers an ongoing portfolio of production, distribution, marketing, guest booking, and most importantly, ad sales. With a unique revenue model for podcasters that includes customized promotional campaigns created specifically around podcaster and targeted audience, service social media promos and pushes, MPN brand advertising, targeted electronic newsletter, experienced sales representation. For advertisers, the Mocha Podcast Network is a safe marketplace to align their brands with trusted voices, organically engaging the highly in-demand female consumer and more. With quality over quantity, from concept to completion, now is the time for content creators and brands to join the innovative Mocha Podcast Network and experience unapologetic conversations with a new perspective.